All right, now the nation's largest labor organization, the AFL-CIO, wants to know where are the jobs in America's future? That was the topic of the panel that included the group's president, Richard Trumka, at the Aspen Ideas Festival or earlier today. Trumka is a big supporter of unemployment insurance, and he called congressional Republicans' refusal to extend jobless benefits a national disgrace. He joins us now from Aspen. So uh, let me let's start with the unemployment insurance uh, issue. It's on the one hand, obviously a massive problem. If you have, uh, we just heard about three million people by the end of the year without uh, uninsurance, unemployment insurance benefits. On the other hand, I know a number of people who were on unemployment insurance and didn't go to look for a job until the benefits were about to run out. I mean, isn't there an issue, as, as Alan Melter was saying yesterday, if, if you pay people not to work? <laughs> well, there's five openings or five applicants for every uh, job opening out there. So you're saying that because of unemployment insurance, they're not looking for jobs? I don't buy that. That's I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you about with the American I'm just telling people. you about people I know. You know, personal cases that I know where people had unemployment insurance and well, look, sort of let's, coasted let's along on it about, until they had to about, get something else to do. Let's talk about the importance to the economy. First of all, I think we have a moral obligation to help those among us that are really trying to get jobs and can't find them. You know, there's 11 million jobs were destroyed since this recession started. We have 15 million people unemployed. You got 25 million that are underemployed that want to work full time and can't find full time jobs. And then you got more people laid off for greater than six months than we've had since the Great Depression. But let's talk about what that does to the economy. Our economy is driven by consumer spending. And if they can't spend because they don't have any benefits, the economy goes down. The, the economy right now is teetering. It's right on the verge. It's stagnant and stalled right now. We need to push it forward. And those benefits are important to do that, not just as a moral thing to help those that are less fortunate among us, but actually for the economy to drive it forward. Rich, can we really afford to do this? And you know what the critics out there are saying, including uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He said it adds new taxes if we extend those benefits, over $30 billion to an already staggering $13 trillion deficit. I'm not saying I agree, but he makes a point here. Can we really afford to do this anymore? Well, look, we don't have a choice right now. In the short term, the United States does not have a deficit crisis. We have a job crisis. And if you want to eliminate those deficits in the future, create jobs, they'll pay taxes, the deficits will go down. In the short term, we have to continue to stimulate, stimulate the economy. That means investing in infrastructure. That means aid to state and local governments so they don't stop spending. And that means uninsurance, extending uninsurance benefits so six and a half people, million people don't stop spending. We don't have a choice, and any reputable economist will tell you, in the short term, we must continue to stimulate the economy so it doesn't dip back into recession. All of this hysteria about deficits is misplaced, and because any economist will tell you that we don't have a short-term deficit problem in this country. We have a longer-term deficit problem that we have to work for. But creating jobs will eliminate or lessen the deficit. Not creating jobs will make that deficit get worse. I wonder what, what, you th what else can be done to, to add jobs here. I mean, boosting lending to uh, small businesses is one thing that's been mentioned a lot. Cutting payroll taxes is one thing that's get, that gets mentioned a lot. Eliminating the minimum wage is one thing that gets mentioned a lot. I mean, what are the, some other ways you think that could, we could attack this issue? Well, eliminating the minimum wage is folly because the lower wages you get, the less people can spend. You have to increase wages. That's the problem we have. But had. you want people to From hire. 1946, absolutely we do. But decreasing the minimum wage isn't a solution to that. It will cause us to have less of a, an economic base because those people will not be able to spend. And you'll be taking money away from people that already are making more money. It hurts the economy, not helps the economy. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Hey, Rich, thank you so much for some time. AFL-CIO's President Rich Trumka.